thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. According to a leading Israeli newspaper, police allegations against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's suspected corruption are backed up by audio recordings. Authorities suspect that the Prime Minister and an Israeli businessman were in process of making an arrangement to see the financier hugely benefit if he would help Netanyahu remain in office. The Haaretz report indicates that the negotiations may never have been completed, though. Netanyahu was questioned under caution for the second time in Case 1000 and Case 2000 last week. Both cases reportedly deal with the Prime Minister allegedly receiving illegal gifts from Israeli businessmen. It was also revealed on Friday that Netanyahu was accused of allegedly using his ties with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry to help an Israeli businessman renew his American visa. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry warned President-elect Donald Trump that moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem would bring about a, quote, explosion of violence. In an interview with CBS on Friday, Kerry said that the violence wouldn't be limited to the West Bank nor just to Israel, and it could ignite the entire Middle East. The top U.S. diplomat also said that it would hurt Israel's ties with Egypt and Jordan, both of which have peace accords with the Jewish state. Kerry continued that, should the U.S. move away from its two-state policy, it would be extremely dangerous for Israel, our friend. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas also warned Trump over the weekend not to move the embassy, saying that anything that will alter the status of Jerusalem will not be acceptable. A major supporter of convicted Sergeant Elor Azaria was arrested at a rally on Saturday night meant to project unity in Israeli society in the aftermath of the soldier being found guilty of manslaughter for shooting a wounded terrorist. About 3,000 people came to Tel Aviv's Rabin Square for the demonstration, which was organized by Captain Ziv Shilon, who lost his arm in a terrorist attack on the Gaza border four years ago. Shilon said the only way to heal the divisiveness over the Azaria case was to come together as one nation. Azaria was convicted of manslaughter last week from an event dating back to March 2016, where he shot at an already neutralized attacker. His sentencing is expected to be announced in the coming week. Also on Saturday night, a 33-year-old man from Jerusalem who protested outside the courthouse against Azaria's conviction was arrested for allegedly inciting to violence against IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Gadi Eisenkot. At the courthouse, protesters had chanted, Gadi, Gadi, beware! Rabin's looking for a friend, referring to assassinated Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. Following through on their promise to retaliate for UNSC Resolution 2334, Israel has just cut $6 million in funding to the United Nations. The money represents the budget allocated to four different committees dedicated to Palestinian issues and was deducted from Israel's $40 million total annual contribution to the UN. Israeli ambassador to the UN Dani Danon said in a statement that, quote, It is unreasonable for Israel to fund bodies that operate against us at the UN. We seek to stop the practice where the UN is used solely as a forum for unending attacks against Israel. Resolution 2334, on the surface, calls all Israeli settlement construction and activities outside the 1948 armistice lines illegal, even though the territories are technically disputed territories under international law. Below the surface of the resolution, however, is a subtle revisionism, as Jewish and Christian holy sites and cities are included and referenced as purely Muslim sites under Israeli occupation. Israel's decision to cut funding to the UN comes just a day after the United States House of Representatives voted in favor of condemning the UN and the Obama administration's actions. A small plane crashed in Israel's Sharon region on Friday, injuring two people. The crash took place just as a small plane was about to touch ground at a small local airport near Tel Mond. Yaakov Partiv, a Magen David Adom paramedic who witnessed the crash, said, quote, I was preparing to get on a flight at the landing strip when we saw a plane that was landing catch fire, end quote. Partiv and another bystander proceeded to pull the two pilots, who were still awake, from the wreck. They were suffering from burns and severe wounds, and were later taken by paramedics to a nearby hospital for further treatment. The cause of the crash is not yet clear. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.